All right, people, we're going to go ahead and continue. All right. Um, you shall know them by their fruits. Okay. This is how you're supposed to judge. All right. This is how you're supposed to judge the character of someone. Okay. Who they are. All right. This is the way we are instructed to judge one another. Okay. And faith without works is dead. Let's get it. I had to have faith. And it's real faith, people. Not blind deception. Because I have the receipts to back up what I speak. All right? It ain't just what I didn't psych myself out to believe because I heard it from some other mortal man. It's some kind of dogmatic religion, a dogmatic belief system that's been passed down for generations. Okay? No. It's something way different. It's that Holy Spirit. It's that living word. It's the Ruach. Okay? And I can back up every single thing in which I say. And I live what I speak. So that's the differences between his people and the charlatans that put on a good show. Okay? They're all about lip service. They're all about superficiality. They're all about, woo look at me. Look how much money I have. Look at my million dollar estate. Look, look at how well I'm able to live. Look how many vacations I get to take. Look how well I get to live. That's their receipts. But... We're showing you that that's the receipts that they serve Lucifer. They serve the adversary. All right? And we got all the receipts to show you that they serve the adversary. Hmm. We could go to the Book of Mormon and show you there how the church, the abominable church, was after nothing but subjugating us and they were only after plundering us destroying us torturing us and plundering us all right we can show you in real historical books how the conquistadors came over here and they worship one and only god the god of gold okay that's from a historical book entitled return of the children of light Okay? We can show you in American Holocaust how th they had unrestrained gre uh, greed for gold. Their unrestrained greed for gold. Okay? Now, this is a fact. <laughs> okay? So it cannot be denied. Now, <clears throat> you can continue to live in your false reality and, you know, remain oblivious all you like. But, um, I'm giving you this truth by the way of the Spirit. And you people love to hate on me, you know, as if I'm the problem. Okay? As if I'm the problem. Me not having a heart after money. Okay? Uh, me not pining after money. Okay? To build a life for myself upon this earth. The ones who constructed this reality are colonizers. The descendants of colonizers. Who had an unrestrained greed. All right? Unrestrained greed for gold. All right? They worship their one and only God. Blind pursuit of the one and only God. Gold. Okay? The Spaniards were colonizers. And they raped, robbed, murdered, and plundered the indigenous people who have been paper genocided and reclassified 
as black people and or African Americans. So if the colonizers took billions of dollars worth of gold from us, uh, don't you think that we deserve to have it back? Do you seriously believe that you're going to hold on to all that was stolen from us in much bloodshed? Do you seriously think that there won't be any justice coming for us? Oh, no, you just want us to continue to be subjugated up under your boot, right? Continue to follow your unjust laws and your unjust system. Why in the hell do you people hate me? I'm not the one that had a blind pursuit for gold, okay? No, that's those who established this system. And now all you want to be mad at me that my heart ain't after money. You shall know them by their fruits. I operate in the fruit of love, divine love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. <clears throat> These are the fruits of the spirit that I operate in, people. So why in the hell do you hate me? Why in the hell do you got to try to reason in your mind that there's something off about me? That that's too good to be true. I ain't nobody upon the face of this earth with a pure heart. Understand, that mindset is going to condemn you. Okay? Because the Most High is going to reveal his holy arm. Yes, he is. He's going to make bare his holy arm. I ain't been on this platform lying to you people. And frankly, I don't give a damn how you perceive me. You can perceive me however the hell you want. It don't make it the real reality. And you're not being obedient to the eternal law of the Most High. To operate in love towards me. Nor are you judging me rightly. You're refusing to judge me based upon the fruits of the spirit. No, instead you judge me according to the wisdom of this world. And that is what is going to condemn you people. Because I don't have to follow the wisdom of this world. I don't have to follow this world's ideology. Real faith, the real faith that I have to show forth the glory of my Father, my God, because we ain't got the same God. Understand, those of you who, who have a heart set after the ways of this world, you, have, you see no problem following the wisdom of this world. Matter of fact, you're puffed up in your pride and your arrogance because you think that you're so wise according to this world. Hey, you are gonna, you are gonna perish. You, you, you're gonna be tormented. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're going to be tormented by your own counterfeit spirit. Because you have made yourself an adversary to the Father's servants. I trust in my Father. I operate in real faith. You people just want to say you have faith. In the most high. But really, your faith is in your money. And this is why you're mad at me. Because, you know, 
It's not that I seek to um make you people look bad. That ain't what I'm seeking to do. I'm seeking to please my father. And in pleasing my father, for real, for real, that's going to reveal the charlatans. Well, I am sorry that you don't want light shown on your hypocrisy, okay? I'm sorry you people who just want to give vain lip service can no longer hide. Time's up for that because the real ones are on the scene. And, And as I stated, you can perceive whatever the hell you want. Your perception doesn't make it the real reality. And you're going to be held accountable for how you have treated me. Because you are supposed to judge based upon the fruits of the Spirit. You ain't seen me out here hating on people. You ain't seen me out here operating in hatred. You ain't seen me operating in in the opposite of this, okay? No, you have not. Yes, I have had much sorrow because of the hard hearts of the people in this world. That's inevitable. That's the long suffering. You ain't seen me be unkind simply because I speak this bitter truth. That ain't unkind. That is love. It's love. To tell you the truth. You people have been comatose. You ain't seen me out of control of myself. You ain't seen me operating in any kind of evil. Now, according to the wisdom of this world, if you're uh, if you got a mindset after this world, people understand that good in this world is seen as evil, and evil in this world is seen as good. So <laughs> this is this is why people it is why it's taking so long. All right? Yes. I am not after your money. I am after real love. I am after real compassion, kindness, mercy, and empathy. That's what I'm after. Not your money. Money is superficial. It was established by the wicked. The wicked made it a necessity to have money to sustain your life. That ain't got nothing to do with me. Just because the wicked established that, people, don't mean that I have to be obedient to it. Okay? Don't mean that I have to spend my time, energy, and effort earning it. Okay? Now, because I serve a different power, I have to have faith in that power. Okay? Okay? Therefore, I am not to spend my time, energy, and effort earning the false God that I do not trust in. Okay? Now, what are my works? This channel. Okay? I am to be obedient and bring forth this word by the way of the Spirit. So, I am working. Okay? I do have the work. The fruit is on my channel. Okay? The fruit is on my channel. Okay? So it's not just vain lip service that I'm giving. Okay? I prove what I speak over here. All right? 2 Peter 1.10 Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. See, the Most High confirmed His word with me, okay, I was instructed to do this, 
And it was confirmed by the Father repeatedly. I don't have to prove anything to you people, okay? Because I know that the Father instructed for me to do this, okay? It's you people who don't want it to be true. It's you people who are holding on to your delusion and your perception and your false reality that you want to try to project onto me, okay? But because I have been validated by way of the Spirit, these things cause me to not stumble. Okay? Confirm your faith. My faith has been confirmed on a continual basis. Where's yours? Now, I'm not putting you down because you work your jobs and you earn your money. But you people confessing out your mouth that you have faith in my Father. That you have faith in my God. But yet you're earning money in order to sustain your life. And then on top of that, you're shutting up your bowels of compassion to his servant that's really being obedient and walking by faith and not by sight, trusting in the Most High to sustain my life because I'm not earning money, okay? So because you people shut up your bowels of compassion and refuse to help me out of your abundance, you don't truly have faith in the one you say you serve, okay? And you're not serving the one you say you serve, all right? No, you're just giving vain lip service. And it's going to be counted against you. The only way that you can truly be having faith in my father and truly be serving my father, even if you're earning money, even if you have money, is by sowing out of your abundance. Filling his servants where we are lacking. Putting That's putting your trust and faith in the great spirit, in the most high, to support his servants. To help his truth go forth. Not to hold on and hoard and be selfish with your abundance and be evil to his servant. That makes you a charlatan. Okay? Those of you who have the Holy Spirit, you will be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not dwell with the arrogant, does not dwell with those who refuse to subdue their ego. So if you can't even hear this truth, understand you do not have the Holy Spirit. You have turned your ear from hearing by way of the Spirit. Therefore, you have rejected the Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is within me. It burns within my heart. I am a doer of his word. Not just a hearer slash speaker only. I don't deceive my own self. I'm here trying to help you people 
become enlightened to the fact that you have been deceived. Because most of you have been a hearer all your life, sitting in them churches, listening to a pulpit pimping pastor, a whole devil, a charlatan leading you astray. Okay? They themselves are not a doer of his word. And like them, those of you who follow them, you are like a man beholding your face in a mirror. And as soon as you walk away, you forget what you look like. That means you're fake. That means you're superficial. But us light workers are authentic. And it is a full-time job. Since the world is always watching us, we light workers must also watch what we do so that no true accusation may be made against us as ambassadors of the true light. Now, y'all can throw all kinds of false projections, all right? You can have your all your um preconceived ideologies and you can have your perceptions and all that but it don't mean a hill of beans if it's not true. If we are being obedient to our maker, then it don't matter your false projection that you project onto us. It don't matter what you perceive in your delusional mind about us, okay? You're running from yourself. You're deflecting outwardly instead of going within and dealing with your demons. You can't have part-time faith and expect a full-time victory. For all of you who are like, well, why can't you just, you know, work part-time and at least earn enough money to, to sustain your life? Like, bruh, the most I told me not to worry about my life. He that loses his life for my name's sake shall gain it. But he that saves his own life shall lose it. I am allowed to live my life the way I want to live it. I don't want to live my life being a slave to money. Okay? I don't want to live my life that way. I cannot be controlled by money. All right? Therefore, I've submitted myself to the Most High. Therefore, with the Most High, I will get a full-time victory, not a part-time, okay? Not fleeting joy. I don't want fleeting joy. I want continuous joy, okay? I want continual happiness, all right? Not fleeting happiness, living paycheck to paycheck. Okay? No, the Most High is going to overturn my captivity of economic slavery. Okay? Now, your charlatans versus the real ones. By their fruit, you will know them. You would think that you would not want to gather grapes from thorns. But because we live in such a false-ass reality and people have been, you know, it, like, it's, it, 
how can I give a, a image of this? It's like it's like you're not seeing the thorns. Instead, they've they've um uh it's like they're projecting um fruit. Okay, they're they're projecting grapes on on them thorns, and you think you're like your pastors. Okay, um they is 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 a deception, people. All right, you think that they are leading you to the most high, but they're leading you astray. So you're getting pricked by the thorns and you don't even know it. You're not being fed. You're not getting the fruit that you need for salvation. You're not getting nourishment. Instead, you're getting injured and you don't know it. You're trying to gather figs from thistles. The nature of the road which he instructed for us to walk is toilsome and hard. Most people don't want to do it. It's much easier to follow the status quo. You're loved that way. The world loves its own. The hypocrite, they don't choose to toil. And I think that the reason why they put seldom choose is because maybe some of them start out, you know, um, toiling a little bit, you know. But eventually, if they are a hypocrite, they will fall off, all right? Eventually, they will fall off, all right? Now, your pulpit pimping pastors, they've been going for centuries, They've been able to live lavishly for centuries, okay? But understand, we're in a paradigm shift now. So now these charlatans are about to be revealed for who they are. Everybody is going to be revealed for who they are. These charlatans don't toil. They only prefer to make a show. This is why your churches, your church services these days is nothing more than a freaking concert. Okay? And a motivational speaker. Your motivational speakers, most of them, is is also, you know, motivating you to be about getting money. Okay? Prosperity gospel. For this very reason, the hypocrite, you would think, would be easily detected. But you people have been blinded for so long, you're hiding the ones of the Father who the Father set before you. You're hiding us, and you're loving the hypocrites. So therefore, you're not detecting the hypocrite. You know... We live in an upside down, backwards as reality. Where evil is praised and glorified. And righteousness, goodness is scorned, hated, ridiculed, and rejected. When the Messiah knows that there are few who find it, he distinguishes these from those who do not find the way, yet pretend to find it. You're not to look at the mask, people. You're not to look at their money and how well they're able to live. 
Because that did not come from the great spirit. You're looking to the mask. But the Messiah told you not to judge on surface level. The Messiah told you to judge based upon the fruits of the spirit. But you people refuse to do that. Therefore, you have been deceived into supporting the hypocrites, the charlatans, the deceivers, and hiding his real servants. You are supposed to look to the behavioral fruits of those who pursue the narrow way. And those who are on the narrow way are not doing the things that the world does. Okay? We are contrary to the ways of this world. But you keep following after these people. They ran ahead and took full advantage. So... The children of light, we get why most people are leery of these kind of messages. But nevertheless, you're still going to be held accountable because you're supposed to judge based upon the fruits of the spirit, people. You will know the real ones by our fruit. Okay, but when you refuse to give ear to us, when you refuse to do your due diligence, understand that's going to be held against you. All right, many of you know about these false pastors and these false teachers. Okay. And so you want to try to put the father serving in the same category. But these people were motivated by money. I'm not motivated by money. I'm motivated by my passion and what the father has put within me to do upon the earth. That's what motivates me. Not money. Micah 3.11, her leaders judged for the money. Her priests teach for a price. And her prophets prophesy for cash. I'm not doing that. Just because... You people who have abundance are being instructed that you are to become a righteous am does not mean that I'm doing this for money. No, I was instructed to break this down for you by the way of the spirit. It is about your heart condition, okay, on both parts for me and for those of you who have an abundance. It is about our heart. Okay? Now, if you have an abundance, your heart testifies against you when you hoard onto it, having no compassion for his servant, that is in need. That's a whole difference than these pulpit pimping pastors, for they are not in need, but yet you are lavishing them week after week with your monetary gifts. And their motivation for preaching is to get your money. Okay, that is the difference. Jeremiah 6, 13, from the least to the greatest, all are greedy for gain. Prophets and priests alike, 
all practice deceit. All right? All of these wicked people. This is what they have done. Because their motivation was for gain for themselves. My motivation is not for selfish gain. Okay? My motivation is obedience. Okay? Huge difference. So I am not in the same category as these charlatans. False religion, all religion is false. All right? These deceivers were not sent by the Most High. They have rejected the truth of the Most High. They are not loving their neighbor as they love themselves. They are not doing for others things they will want done for themselves. They're not refraining from doing to others things they will not want done to themselves. They are deceiving you. They're lying to you. And I know that they wouldn't want to be lied to. I know that they would not want to be deceived. Though they are. But Lucifer. But I live my life according to the eternal law. So if you people want to keep hating on me, that is your choice. If you want to keep being evil to me because you think that I am trying to be like him, that's your choice. You have free agency. I don't want to be nothing like this dude. I am nothing like him. I live in poverty. This dude has this kind of estate. I ain't trying to be like these wicked people. This is how they are living while there is homelessness and utter poverty. Their hearts are stony. They ain't got a compassionate bone in their body. They're living lavishly. They got a private airport on 24 acres on indigenous land. You cannot serve the living power and money. It's an impossibility. Well, I don't have money. But I wholeheartedly serve and love the living power. Now, I've read this many times, people. This is from the Book of Mormon, 1 Nephi 13. Chapter 13, starting in verse 6. And it came to pass that I beheld this great and abominable church. And I saw the devil, and he was the founder of it. And I also saw gold and silver and silks and scarlets and fine twine linen and all manner of precious clothing. And I saw many harlots. And the angel spake unto me, saying, Behold, the gold and the silver and the silks and the scarlets and the fine twine linen and the precious clothing and the heartless are the desires of this great and abominable church. This ain't my desires, people. Other than to be restored with what we had before we were plundered. Okay? And I know that the Father is going to do that. I am not dependent upon people to do that. 
I am not dependent upon mortal men to do that. No, that's going to be supernatural. In the paradigm shift, okay? Because we are in a paradigm. Being in a paradigm means that you're in a false-ass reality. It means it's not the real reality. Where the holy wicked are on top living lavishly. And the righteous are on the bottom in utter poverty. That is a paradigm. That is a false reality. And also, for the praise of the world, do they destroy the saints of the Most High and bring them down into captivity. This is the history of your church. This is the history of all of your established religions upon the face of the earth. And it came to pass that I looked and beheld many waters, and they divided the Gentiles from the seed of my brethren. And it came to pass that the angel said unto me, Behold, the wrath of the Most High is upon the seed of thy brethren. That eternal law was poured out upon us. Our own wickedness. We were served by the worst of the heathen, that invaded our lands. The great spirit allowed it. The great spirit did not lead them over here. Did not take these devils by the hand and lead them over here. No, he did not. Just because Christopher Columbus took it upon himself to study our scriptures, our records, and was led and uh, deceived by an evil spirit, manipulated by an evil spirit. Don't you understand that Satan knows the scripture too? Demons know the scripture too? I, like, I, I love my brethren, okay? I, I do. I ain't got no animosity towards my brethren, all right? But I got a problem with blasphemy against my maker. All right? It's time up for that. Why in the hell would the great spirit, why in the hell would the most high take these devils by the hand and lead them and guide them over here to destroy his people? That don't make any damn sense whatsoever. Allowing and doing is two completely different things, people. Him removing protection from us because he did warn us and did tell us that if we refuse to be obedient and keep his eternal law, he's going to turn his face from us. He's going to remove protection from us. And our stiff neck ass did not believe him. Okay, we didn't take, we didn't take the most high at his word. Okay. So, he had to show us, all right? So, yes, indeed, he turned his face from us. When he removed protection from us and our land, then that allowed for Satan to have his time. And it was Satan that deceived Christopher Columbus. It was Satan that led him and guided him over to our lands. And the great spirit allowed it. That is way different than the most high going to these people like, hey, I'm going to need you to go across the waters over there. Here, here's how you get over there. Uh, take like literally taking them by the hand. And bro, that is, that, that's sinister. That's making the most high out to be evil. Okay. And the most high ain't evil. The most high wanted to continue to protect us. But it was because of our own hard heartedness and 
arrogance, um, disobedience, refusal to repent, um, th- that that's on us, okay? Not on the great spirit. We have to take accountability for our own iniquity, okay? So it wasn't the great spirit that led them over here. No, Satan had his time to show forth his plan to all humanity and all creation, all right? Everybody doesn't seem to play in a Lucifer in its full glory, okay? And now time's up because now the remnant has been awakened in the land of our captivity, and we're instructed to break these things down crystal clearly for you, okay? So that wrapped up the Most High was him removing protection and allowing these heathens over here to our lands. And I looked and beheld a man among the Gentiles who was separated from the seed of my brethren by the many waters. And I beheld the Spirit of the Most High, that it came down and wrought upon the man. And, you see, it was not a Spirit of the Most High, all right? It was an evil spirit. This is why my brethren... Um, say this because they're just taking what this what was what they read in a physical book, and they're you know they're just taking that at face value, okay. But you got to go deeper, all right. The spirit of the Most High don't do such things, okay. Only evil spirits do things like that, all right. Evil an evil spirit came down and wrought upon the man, and he went forth upon the many waters even unto the seed of my brethren who were in the promised land, okay? So I'm going to give you a visual so you can understand. There's not any many waters over here, people, to cross, all right? There's no many waters over here in the three parts, okay? No, they had to come from the three parts, crossing the many waters. This is the many waters, the Arctic Ocean, the North Atlantic Ocean, and the South Atlantic Ocean, okay? They had to cross this many waters, all right? And they did not come straight through, all right? Again, many videos breaking down how there's a geyser here. All right, a natural geyser that goes away from this land. All right, this is a protected land. All right, yes, and the water, like this geyser protects this land. That, that was one of our protections. All right, so it helped us be able to travel, okay, because the geysers would take us from here anywhere we wanted to go. All right, but for the other nations to come over here, it was a bit more difficult because the currents, the ocean currents, was going away from this land. Okay, because this is a separated land. Okay, this is a set apart land. All right, the land of promise. Okay. Um, so we're proving again, as I have many times that the Gentiles, all right, and the church, because your churches, your, all your religions, all of that was spawned from the same damn people. All right. The colonizers, those who set themselves up in authority. All right. So we're showing you what they are after. Okay. During the conquest, the Spanish, directed by the Catholic Church, systematically destroyed nearly all vestiges of Incan spiritual life. Every lineage, waka, every um, that stone, and all the ceremonial sites, and the, uh, whatever that is, quitpus, Moreover, the conquistadors invaded sanctuaries of the virgins of the sun, whom they raped. Okay? So this was not done in righteousness. 
You did not come over here, Europeans, sharing the gospel in love of the Most High. You came over here literally defiling virgins, okay? You raped them. Your forefathers, these conquistadors, this what they did when they invaded these lands. So it was not something benevolent. It was something that was horrific to those whom it happened to. The argue the agricultural terraces and irrigation systems were seized but not maintained. As a result, the people were no longer connected to the stars from which they originated. The, solist, the solstices and equinoxes so vital to the people's vision could no longer be accurately observed. The people's ties with history were severed, and there were no longer any surpluses of food or water, but instead droughts and famines. The conquistadors driven by overwhelming greed and a blind arrogance based on an indoctrinated sense of moral superiority had but two interests, subjugation and gold. Now, how in the hell are Europeans held to the premise of being the moral superiority when your history of coming upon these lands is literally dripped in raping, robbing, and murdering. How is that moral? Raping, robbing, murdering, and destroying. How in the hell is that moral how does that make you morally superior if you really were morally superior then there would be morals upon the earth uh everything wouldn't be wicked every single movie pretty much wouldn't be polluted with sexual immorality Violence and every single vice of Satan. You are not the moral superiority. We can clearly see that as a majority, these people have but two interests subjugation and go. The story in Mesoamerica is much the same as that in Peru, although in both regions, even long after their golden ages, the civilizations overran by the Spanish were in many ways far more advanced and progressive than the cities of Spain at that time. They destroyed our greatness. And they portrayed themselves to the world as if they are the great ones. Since the Vatican had decreed that the indigenous people of the Americas were not human, and thus had no souls, anything was tolerated in a blind pursuit of the one and only God. God. From Cusco alone, the Spanish took billions of dollars worth of gold often in the form of extraordinary pieces of artwork melted into ingots. 
Much of the wealth that came from the conquest ended up in the coffers of the Catholic Church, which in turn continued to support the conquistadors. So you wonder how the hell this system was eventually able to be established? It was off of raping, robbing, and murdering the indigenous people, plundering us, and funding their their quest, okay? It funded them, okay? It supported them, all right? So therefore, we, the indigenous people, are nothing but a commodity. Perpetual slaves. Till different. That's what your dumb diversus is. Till different. Well, there's about to be a difference. Because your time is up. Ultimately, the goal of the conquistadors was to break the spirit of the people. They were enslaved and brutalized. How is that moral? How is that making you morally superior to enslave and brutalize people on their own damn land while you just take over their land? Rape, rob, murder, and plunder them. Mass genocide their people. Paper genocide the rest of them. Reclassifying us as African American and black people. Stripped of everything that had meaning. And our spiritual practices were outlawed. However, despite this violence, the seed did not die. We don't die, we multiply. But instead went underground within the unconscious, where in the realm of our deepest yearnings, it awaited the return of the light. Where is here now? We are the light. We are the children of light. And your time is up, you wicked people. From American Holocaust. I'm just going to come down here. Still, despite the urgings of the crown, the British crown, The trade in coca grew because, as Hernando put it, down there in the coca plantations, there is one disease worse than all the rest, the unrestrained greed of the Spaniards. Okay? Unrestrained greed of the Spaniards, who are Gentiles, who are Europeans. Okay? So your Pope is not righteous. Your Pope ain't righteous. Literally impoverished nations of people so they can live lavishly. They're not even the true people. They plundered the true people. They impoverished the true people. And they set themselves in authority. None of this belongs to them. It was stolen from us. We were brought low. And it's biblical prophecy that many of you people want to continue to ignore to your own detriment because your time is up. Now one second. Find out where we are. 
So, how come we can see the same thing in the reality that we're living today? So, all your pulpit pimping pastors, I were to live lavishly, and then all of your richest people upon the face of the earth, your billionaires, okay, your richest family in every state. They're all Europeans, okay? All have a confederacy of Psalms 83. All worship the adversary. The God of materialism. The God of capitalism. Okay? I hope it's becoming crystal clear. The power that I serve cares about what's in your heart. So if you have no real love in your heart to impart of your substance that was established by the wicked in order for the righteous of us who's taking a stance against it to live our life, then you are denying the Messiah. You're denying the one you say you profess. You're outright blatantly denying him before men. And you are choosing the side of the adversary. Alright, I don't care what the hell you think about that. You can twist this all around however you want. But bottom line, you can't claim that you love your neighbor as you love yourself and hold on to an abundance while you know your neighbor is in need. Lacking that which you have an abundance of. And you know it, people. See, and this, and this is the thing. Deep down within you, you know this truth, all right? So why in the hell do you want to continue to hate on me? Okay, I'm only being obedient. I'm merely being obedient to speak this living word because we're at the end, people. We are literally at the end, okay? Because, bruh, there's so much misery upon this earth, okay? And the only way to fix it is to come back to the great spirit and begin to love one another, okay? Begin to keep his eternal law. All right? You ain't going to fix it any other way, people. There ain't no other way to fix this world. Okay? There ain't no revising the system. None of that. The whole damn system got to come crashing down, bro. Because they, for one, are foreigners on our ancestral land. And they're going to relinquish control of these lands. Okay? They're about to relinquish their control of these these lands and they ain't gonna have no choice because their time is up okay and if you want to be spared with us then you will want to cleave to us all right um one second Ain't no false doctrine over here, bro. Okay? I show and prove what I speak. All right? There ain't no way you can hold on to, to an abundance and claim you serve the Most High while His people suffer. Ain't no way. Okay? Ain't no way. You are deceiving yourself, people. Okay? Understand you are deceiving yourself. Okay, on a mass scale, you're deceiving yourself. All right. Mm, one second. All right. First John three seven. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Okay, is the separation, people, is the separation of the righteous 
apart from the wicked. You must make your declaration, okay? You know in your heart who it is you serve. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. All right? It's what it, wherever your heart is, that's where your treasure is. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. All right? If you truly love the great spirit who gives the breath of life abundantly, then you would want to be, you would be righteous. Okay? You would be loving. You would be compassionate. You would be empathetic. You would be merciful. Okay? You will not be puffed up in your pride and your arrogance. You will not be hardened of heart, okay? You you would not be unkind and evil because then you are not righteous. You are wicked, okay? This is why you people hate on me. This is why the majority of people hate on me. All right, because I'm exposing the evils of this world. All right, treading on the things that many of you love. This is exposing your love for money and materialistic things, and you don't like it. Therefore, you have made your at yourself an adversary against me. Therefore, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Where is the lie, people? Where in the hell is the lie? How in the hell do you think it's righteous for there to be rich and poor? It's not righteous, people, whatsoever. Okay? This is not righteous. Why are you looking to him like this man is of God? Why are you looking to this dude like he holy? Why are you looking to him like he's some kind of moral superior? This is a whole devil. Okay? Money don't make you righteous. Materialistic things don't make you righteous. It's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to make it into the coming kingdom. Therefore, the people who have all the money and they don't want or need for anything... The thing that they going to have to do is become generous. And that's going to be damn near impossible for the majority of them. Okay, that's why he compared it to a camel going through the eye of a needle. The rich young man. The disciples were amazed at his words. But the Messiah said to them again, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Why? Because... You've been ruled by greed and selfishness. 
And you're going to have to counteract it with generosity. And most rich people ain't going to do that. Especially not to somebody who they've been taught all their life is nothing but a nigga. Nothing but property. Nothing but a commodity. Three-fifths of a human being. He who trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will thrive like foliage. It's hard for you to begin to do good when you are accustomed to do evil. So, understand, people. This is why you. This is why y'all been hating on me. All right, because I'm exposing this false ass reality. I have exposed a false god of money. But many of you people, you're still holding on to it as if it came from the Most High God, okay? No, that that power did not create money. That power did not create this economic system, okay? It had nothing to do with it other than the removal of protection from us and our land and allowing it for a period of time, okay? And now it's time to begin to change your heart and show love out of your abundance. But hey, by all means, continue to hate on me. You know, that that's your choice. That is your free agency, okay? That's your free agency, but it's going to reveal who you are. If someone has material possessions, if someone has what has been established by this world system in order for us to sustain our life upon the earth, if someone has an abundance of that and refuses to help the father servants that are in need of substance, your heart is then revealed as an adversary, okay? For how can a love of the Most High dwell in a person like that? You're full of demons. Okay? Selfishness and greed don't come from the Great Spirit. It comes from the adversary. This is only because we've been in the paradigm, people. It's not because it's the real reality. These people are are not the moral superiority. These people are not the bringers of civilization. No, they are not. They are the destroyers of civilization. Okay? These people are not righteous. All right? These people are not righteous in the least bit. Okay? Not righteous. Every single thing that the Vatican has was stolen from the indigenous people. Okay? So, one second. That's wickedness, people. I don't know what the hell makes you think selfishness comes from the great spirit. I don't know what the hell makes you think greed comes from the living power who told us to love one another. That's a strong delusion. God wants you prosperous. But never mind the homeless. Never mind those poor people. Never mind those in poverty. My bro, you have been deeply deceived. 
during an age of deception, you've been deeply deceived and you don't want to see it. <clears throat> One second. There's something else I've seen I needed to bring out. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, you don't want to see it. All right, during the age of deception, you don't you don't want to know that we we're in a paradigm. You don't want to know that we've been living in a time of Lucifer because you've been enjoying yourself. All right, you love the world centered in selfishness and greed. See, everyone who does evil hates the light. Now it makes sense why so many people hate me. Because they're, they, they're doing evil. Okay? If you're doing evil, then you're going to hate on the righteous who are the light upon the earth. And you will... Keep yourself away from us. Shield yourself away from us. You don't want to come near us. Because if you come near us, where we're the light, then you know that your deeds will be exposed. So you keep your distance away from us. Okay? So that you can hide in the shadows. Okay, so you can continue your pretense. But the Father sees you. You can't hide from your maker. But you are afraid. This is why you keep your distance from me. You're afraid to come into the light. Because you know that your deeds will be exposed. But your deeds are being exposed anyway. The whole world are going to begin to see who is who. The, the real reality is coming into fruition. You're going to see the real reality. Whether you want to or not. Because time's up for this illusion. Second. Mm. There it is. So the world's lies has no weight on the true reality being released, people. Very soon, your fictional world is getting ready to come to an abrupt end. Okay? And all praises to the Most High. I can't wait. Because I am so super tired. I am so super tired. You people in your stony freaking hearts. You, you loving that which don't feel any misery. Don't feel any kind of pain, agony, long suffering. None of that. Money don't suffer. Okay, it's an inanimate object that was created by wicked people. Hell is printed. It's not even backed by gold any longer. Okay, it hasn't been for a long damn time. So it's literally just monopoly money. Okay, and you are in love with that, while you are hating people who are suffering, and you're justifying it. You're seeing it as righteous. You think that you're righteous in being selfish and greedy and puffed up in your pride and arrogance. No, that's self-righteousness, people. That's self-righteousness. People have a habit of inventing fictions they will believe in in order to ignore the truth they cannot accept. 
So it don't matter whether or not you can accept the things that I've been given to speak by way of the spirit. You're going to see it. Okay, and now we're at the end. So I don't have to humble myself down to the ideology of men. Alright? And I can speak however I want to speak. I ain't cussing none of you out. And I respect everybody. Because I want to be respected. So I treat people the way I want to be treated. So I don't deliberately get on here and belittle people. But I speak that truth by the way of the spirit. And sometimes it comes across chastisingly. Because that's that spirit of reproof. And a spirit of reproof comes to chastise. Okay? So it sounds like you're being talked down to. But it's not purposefully. I don't do that on purpose. I don't mean to do it, okay? Like I said, that's out of my control because it's the spirit of truth that's speaking through me, all right? Um, people, I cannot be fake, all right? I have to be myself, all right? So, you know, you people refuse to truly get to know me, to understand how meek I truly am. How humble, how loving I truly am. Okay? I just have a very hard shell like a turtle. Okay? But I'm very soft on the inside of the, uh, of the shell. Alright? The Father has, has shielded me with that shell. Okay? So you can no longer gaslight me. Because the gaslighting used to... That was my kryptonite. And having no understanding of these people trying to force me into their reality and I had no understanding what was happening and when I say people trying to force me into their reality you know their reality that is all about the money okay but I was always you know questioning you know my reality I was always questioning like this don't seem right okay but my family was very evil towards me um, due to the fact that I did not have a heart after money. Now, I, I don't say this, you know, to put them down because it was, they, they don't know any, they didn't know any better. All right. I don't think that they knew what they were really doing. It's just that they're, they had been programmed to, um, view money as a necessity. Okay. And because my mom and my dad, um, and my brother, Okay, my, my whole family, my aunts, my uncles, okay, they were all, well, hell, we were all programmed with this, but they readily took to it, okay? Um, they conformed to it, okay? They conformed to the ideology that money is a necessity of life, okay? They conformed to that ideology. But I, I did not fully conform to that ideology, all right, clearly. Because those who do, um, they go all out to earn their money and build a life for themselves upon this earth, in this reality, okay? But as for me, I, w I had questions, okay? I was seeking answers, all right, I was seeking clarity and understanding. All right, um, I, I wanted to understand m my life. I, I wanted to understand why the world was the way that it was, and this irritated um, my family. This irritated my mom um, predominantly. Um, my dad left when I was 10, so it was pretty much my mom that, you know, raised me and my, my little brother, all right? So it irritated my mom that um, I, I was questioning everything. I was questioning my whole damn reality, all right? And I was not taking to the indoctrination very well at all, 
okay? I was rebelling against it naturally, all right? So this caused my mom to feel some type of way about me, all right? And would get angry at me, upset with me for, you know, not conforming to the ways of this world, okay? As if this world came from the Most High. As if this reality came from the Most High. It did not, okay? But at the time, I, I didn't know it, but I was questioning. My mom was not questioning, all right? She had, a, she, she had readily accepted the reality that we've all been presented. Okay, pretty much my whole family has, all right? And because I could not readily accept it, I was casted as rebellious, okay? So um, I, I talk about this quite often on my channel, all right? Because it, it is what it is, people. It's the truth, okay? Now, as you heard on the audio, how the spirit of truth comes across like it's chastising, all right? This is proof of this, all right? Second Nephi, um, chapter 1, and I'm just going to start here in verse 25. For behold, you have accused him that he sought power and authority over you, but I know that he has not sought for power nor authority over you, but he has sought the glory of the Most High. I seek to glory my Father, all right? And I seek your own eternal welfare, okay? Um, but many people have murmured because, you know, I have been plain unto you. You say that I use sharpness. You say that I have been angry with you. But behold, this sharpness was the sharpness of the power of the word of the Most High, which is in me. And that which you call anger is the truth according to that which is in the most high power, the almighty, the living God, which I cannot restrain, manifesting boldly concerning your iniquities, your coldness of heart, your lack of compassion, your lack of kindness, your lack of mercy, your lack of empathy. These things are your iniquities. Okay, that you need to fix in order to make it into the coming kingdom. All right. And it must needs be that the power of the Most High must be with us, even unto us instructing you that you must obey the eternal divine law of love. Okay. Not obey the wisdom of this world. And hold on to your love of money. Okay. But behold it was not he. But it was the spirit of the most high. Which was in him. Which opened up his mouth to utterance. That he could not shut it. Okay. I am instructed to do this. By way of the spirit. Alright. I've been, I've been ordained for this. Okay. So. Um. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. Okay! So, now that I have the understanding and the clarity, it's you people that's going to have to do what I did. You're going to have to follow suit. See, the children of light are the first fruits. All right? You, see, you, want to then, you want to ignore the prophecy. Okay? As long as you ignore the real prophecy of us being awakened in a land of our captivity, you're going to be lost. Okay, you want to continue to follow the Gentiles' prophecy that all of these things are coming in the future? The pale horse coming in the future? Um, excuse me, but behold, the pale horse came with Christopher Columbus. All right, they brought death and destruction over here. Okay, you want to continue to follow the Gentiles' prophecy that all of these things are coming in the future? 
back a little bit again. Okay, as long as you ignore the. See, this is this the thing. You guys are ignoring the real prophecy because you're casting off the real people. All right. If you you want to then you want to ignore the prophecy. Hold on. See, the children of light are the first fruits. All right. If you you want to then you want to ignore the prophecy. Now we are the first fruits. Okay. Now hold on a second. <clears throat> um, if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Okay? <sighs> of his own will begat he us with a word of truth. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Okay, James 1.18. Okay. <clears throat> Romans 8.23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves. Waiting for the adoption. So we're waiting on you righteous ams. You are the ones to be adopted. Okay? But we have the first fruits of the Spirit. Alright? To with the redemption of our body. Alright? We're waiting for the adoption to help us. Okay? You gotta help us. Alright? The righteous ams will help us. Okay? Israel was holiness unto the Most High, and the first fruits of his increase. All right? All that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Most High. All right? All that come against us is going to be devoured. All right? Now, and be can become the first fruits of them that slept. Okay, we were sleeping, and now we have been awakened in the land of our captivity. All right, so now we're here. He said that he would awaken us. You, when you ignore this prophecy and you keep following after the prophecies that the Gentiles are giving you, um, you're you're being misled because they don't have any real understanding. They are dismissing and just ignoring the true biblical people and the true biblical land. Okay. So let's start up here in verse twenty-seven. This is Baruch. All right. O Lord, our power, thou hast dealt with us after all thy goodness, and according to all that great mercy of yours, as thou spakest by thy servant Moses in a day, when thou did command him to write the law before the children of Israel, saying, if you will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations where you will be scattered. For I knew that they will not hear me, because it is a stiff necked people, but in the land, but in the land of their captivities, we have remembered ourselves. This is a very important prophecy that a great majority of the world is ignoring. <clears throat> but it's to your own detriment, because understand, we know that he is the most high, our power. So because we know that, we are trusting in him. We are no longer trusting in the monetary system. Okay? So we know that he is the most high, our power. Who? The one that woke us up in the land of our captivity. All right, and brought back to remembrance of who we are. All right, the one that gave us a heart and ears to hear. All right, well, we have praised 
our God in a land of our captivity. And we think upon his name, meaning we keep his eternal divine law in mind at all times. We operate in it, okay? Therefore, we have returned from our stiff neck ways and from our wicked deeds, okay? For we remember the way of our fathers which sinned before the Most High, okay? So we have repented for the sins of our forefathers, all right? And we are patiently enduring great long suffering, awaiting the adoption and the overturning of our circumstances, all right? You're ignoring this prophecy. <clears throat> Understand that here very soon, we're going to get our land back. And if you want to be in the blessed promised land, partaking of the abundance of blessings with us, then you will need to cleave to us okay see the children of light are the first fruits all right you see you, you want to then you want to ignore the prophecy okay as long as you ignore the real prophecy of us being awakened in a land of our captivity you're going to be lost Okay, you want to continue to follow the Gentiles' prophecy that all of these things are coming in the future? The pale horse coming in the future? Um, excuse me, but behold, the pale horse came with Christopher Columbus. All right, they brought death and destruction over here on a mass scale. I got a book entitled American Holocaust. Okay. All right, they brought death and destruction over here. All right, behold the pale horse. One second. Behold the pale horse. Mm -hmm. That's actually a book. I think I have that book. Revelation 6 8. All right. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with a beast of the earth. I got many videos breaking down in historical records the heinous things you guys, you, your forefathers did in these lands. Okay? One second. So you can see it here, all right? It, like the only thing I did was take screenshot and add the illustration, all right? Um, well, actually, I don't think I even added this illustration. I think I saved it like this, and I highlighted this and underlined this, okay? That's the only thing that I did. But as you can read, you can see here, it's the same thing, okay? Over the fourth part of the earth, okay? They know about the fourth part of the world. They know about the fourth part. Okay. Here's another depiction. Here's just a uh, map. Okay. 
there's the three parts one two three all right and the fourth part over here okay this is the fourth part all right and this is the final part that the great spirit allowed the Europeans to invade and trodden underfoot okay for a certain period of time all right these lands were unknown to the Europeans. The earth is divided into three parts, one of which is called Asia, the second Europe, the third Africa. Apart from these three parts of the world, there exists a fourth part beyond the ocean, which is unknown to us. Okay? So they heard all of these amazing stories about um, life over here. They knew it was the biblical land. All right. They heard of all of the commerce and all the great things in this land, but they were not allowed to come over here. All right. But then they finally got their opportunity with Christopher Columbus because of our own iniquity that we refused to turn from. Christopher Columbus was across the many waters, and he was led by evil spirits to come over here and rape, rob, murder, and plunder us, okay? And today, many of you are puffed up in your pride and your arrogance as if you are the bringers of civilization when you brought death and destruction into the world, Okay? Holding up your cross. You forced us into Christianity. All right? And those over in what's labeled Mexico today, the indigenous people over there, same co same complexion, copper-colored people, you know, woolly hair and whatnot, the biblical people, all right? They were forced into, into Catholicism, okay? They were forced into being Catholics by the Spaniards, all right? We were forced into becoming Christians over here in North America. And all over the earth. So understand, your fictional world is getting ready to come to an end. Okay? They brought death and destruction over here on a mass scale. I got a book entitled American Holocaust. Okay? So they did the most. They genocided us over here. They genocided even holy righteous people. They spilled much innocent blood. They tortured the holy people. They taunted the most high. And the Most High had to allow them their time, for the servant is not greater than his master. And our master had to go through great suffering. But we're at the end this time. Yes, I, and I know your charlatan's been telling you for centuries, all right, that time is at hand. We're at the end, we're at the end. Understand, they were the little boy that cried wolf, okay? But now the wolf is really here, okay? Like, y y your time's up, people. All right? Revelations 13, 5 through 6. And a beast was given a mouth, uttering haughty and blasphemous words. And it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. It opened this mouth to utter blasphemies against the Most High, blaspheming his name and his dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven, okay? And also his land, the land that he set aside, uh, set apart to, for his name's sake, okay? The Gentiles have been blaspheming his name all of this time. All right. And yes, we're now at the end of this. So instead of us literally being tortured on a cross or in dungeons with all kinds of their wicked instruments of the Romans, the Romans got their thrill off of torturing us.
It's not our way equal. Okay. Ways yes, they enjoy torturing us. They get they they get fulfillment. They get enjoyment out of destroying us and torturing us. Okay? This is the soul. This is some sick shit. Okay? So understand what they did. So they created angels of torture. Alright? Imagine the souls that were tortured like the, the evil people. Alright? That were slaughtering the animals and all of this thing. See, the Most High is infinite and knows all things. Alright? Knows the outcome of all of these things. So, and, and so I know it, it can get pretty freaking deep when I flow by way of the spirit, people. All right. So we we going to get a little deep. I'm not really going to show much imagery. I'm just going to speak to you. All right. And we'll be bringing more imagery later. Okay. But yes, um, I'm, I'm going to break it down. All right. So, the wicked of my people who were doing the most evil, the Levitical priesthood that were forcing animal sacrifices on the people, stone and prophets and all of this, they were the ones that were in the vessels that the uh, Gentiles were allowed to just, you know, have their thrills with, along with some of the holy, okay, again, because the servant is not greater than his master. Yes, so both the wicked and the righteous were allowed by the great spirit um, to be tortured and murdered, all right? Now, um, like I said, we're not going to show too much imagery, but I, I am led to um, bring out the 70 shepherds. Just so you can see. Now, the Most High wouldn't tell anybody to kill because he said, Thou shalt not kill. However, understand we reap what we sow. Okay. So, he left us in the hand of lions and tigers and wolves and jackals and in the hand of foxes and all the wild beasts. And these wild beasts began to tear at those sheep to pieces. And I saw that he left that house of theirs and their tower and gave them all or allowed them all into the hand of lions that they should tear and devour them into the hand of all the wild beasts. And I began to cry aloud with all my power and I called upon the Lord of the sheep and showed him this in reference to the sheep that we were being devoured by all the wild beasts when they invaded these lands. They were like savages, all right, raping, robbing, murdering, and plundering, literally. <clears throat> but he remained silent. This is your silence in heaven that you Christians want to talk about. Yes, he was silent, allowing your Christianity to spread all over the freaking earth in great wickedness allowed all of your atrocities okay yes he was silent you know because of our iniquity all right not because he was in one accord with what you were doing no let's keep reading all right he remained silent seeing it he did not rejoice no he did not he was saddened that we were devoured and swallowed and robbed but yet he left us in the hand of all the wild beasts as food. Why? Because this was prophecy. We were warned. We were told if we do not turn from our iniquity that this would happen. And that there would be nothing that he could do about it because he was going to have to allow that cup to be poured out we filled up the cup therefore we had to drink it okay and he called 70 shepherds and allowed the sheep 
all right, into the hands of the 70 shepherds that they should pasture us, all right? And he spoke to the shepherds and to their companions. Each single one of you shall now pasture the sheep, okay? Pasture the sheep, all right? These were the righteous Gentiles at first, all right? Because there were some that were seeking asylum, um in these lands they were being persecuted all right these gentiles were being persecuted all right they were being persecuted by the um rich um those who were set themselves up in authority in um England and all uh, in Europe okay um in Britain and all of them places these people were being um oppressed heavily oppressed all right now they were crying out because of oppression, all right? So, the Great Spirit allowed them over on these lands, okay? With a covenant, not really a covenant, but more like instruction, all right? You can come over here to these lands, but continue to show forth my goodness, all right? Otherwise, you're going to be cut off. All right. So, many of you Christians, you want to say the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of disobedience, we were broken off. And you stood by faith. Be not high-minded, but reverence. For the Most High spared not the natural branches. We've been going through hell. So you need to take heed. Lest you not be spared. Lest you end up going through all the hell that we've been going through for centuries. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of the Most High on us who fail. Severity, but toward the Gentiles and all nations that came over here to the fourth part of the earth, you've only known his goodness. You have only known the goodness of the Most High. Okay? If thou continue in his goodness. All right? But for the majority, this did not happen. No, no sooner than your people landed upon these shores. It was high day for them. To just, they, they were like Big Judah said, they were clapping their hands. Oh, we got these niggas now. Oh, we got them now. They they messed up with their power. They messed up with their God. Oh, we got them now. We got them now. Then now they're going to be under our feet for thousand for for at least 2000 years. They're going to be up under our feet. Now we can do whatever the hell we want to do to them. Okay? This was your forefathers' mindset. Okay? But understand you about to be cut off. You are about to be cut off. Because if you are not, if you are not showing forth the goodness of the Most High by the abundance that He allowed you to obtain in these blessed promised lands over here, all right? If you're not showing forth His goodness, you are about to be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in disobedience, shall be grafted in. So understand, we are grafted back into our natural tree. For the Most High is able to graft us in again. For if you Gentiles 
were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to your nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, us, the real biblical people, the remnant, who you want to keep ignoring and acting as if we are nothing. You want to take our records. You want to take our scriptures and claim you love our big brother and our father. But yet you hate us. How, Sway? How? How the hell that work? That, 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 that they all work that way. I'm seeing all damn day, every day, you Gentiles taking my scriptures, my records, the records of my forefathers, and call yourself posting these scriptures. Why well, you keep blatantly ignoring his people? But you want to be grafted into our natural tree. You are coming up under our covenant that we have with the great spirit. You can't keep ignoring us like we're irrelevant and then you're just going to take over like now you're the biblical people? Like the Christian church are the, are the saints of God? No, you're not. So how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into our own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part had happened to Israel. For a period of time, we didn't know who we were. Until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. The fullness of the Gentiles have come in. The fullness of your wickedness, that is, has come in because now we are no longer blind. Blindness happened to us until the fullness of your wickedness. Therefore, the great spirit has removed from you being the 70 shepherds. You are no longer the 70 shepherds. The 70 shepherds begun to die off. And you no longer have authority over our spirit nor our mental. You no longer have the authority to say anything about our records. We're the true people. But you were allowed a period of time to pasture the sheep, and you did not continue in his goodness. Everything he instructed you do, but you didn't do. And I would allow them delivered unto you according to number. And the only ones that were allotted to be killed, all right, by the Most High, like were, were the ones that were evil, okay? Because this was them reaping their just desserts. The Most High didn't tell them to kill nobody because he said thou shalt not kill, Okay? But yet, it was just happening. It was just to allow it to happen to those who were wicked. But 
those of us who were holy, it was injustice to kill us and to torture us. But still yet it was allotted because a servant is not greater than his master. All right. And it is how you get the crown of glory. All right. The crown of glory does not come without suffering. Okay. You got to earn the crown of glory. So he don't tell nobody to kill or destroy. Okay. But these things were allowed. All right. And I explained to you, um, the difference between the wicked ones that was destroyed. Okay. Creating the angels of torture. All right. And versus the righteous ones who were tortured and murdered. All right. And, um, was received into the father's bosom. Okay. <clears throat> now, he gave those sheep, he allowed the sheep over into their hands. And to another he called and said unto him, Watch and see everything that the shepherds do concerning these sheep. For they will destroy more of them than allotted. Okay? Not commanded, because the Most High don't command um, to kill. Okay? Now, as from the 70 shepherds, people. Now, you did not continue in his goodness as, as a whole, Europeans, all right? If you are an individual person of European descent and or of another nation, and you have abundance, and you say that you're not racist, you say that you don't hate us, then prove it out of your abundance. Help his people. That's been done this way, mistreated, raped, robbed, murdered, and plundered. Help us become a righteous am. Okay? This happened to us. All right? At the hands of Europeans. All right? Um, we we're a little over an hour. Okay? So let me just see where we're at. But the ones who become evil <laughs> angels <laughs> were the wicked <laughs> ones. <laughs> okay? Not the ones who died in peace because of his spirit that was with him while they were being tortured. The same in today's day. All right. So no, they're, they're not still using their torturous instruments on the holy people these days now that we've awakened. But their way of torturing us now in this time. In this system, the economic system of capitalism, the mentality is root hog or die poor. So if we don't bow down and spend our time, energy, and effort pining after the God that's been established of this world, in God we trust, if we don't join ourselves to that by earning it, then the mentality is you deserve to suffer. Just like it was the mentality of all the wicked that were standing around the cross taunting the Messiah as he was being tortured and murdered by the religious leaders of the Roman government. Okay, well, you live completely reckless. It ain't no different, people. We're just at the end. And yeah, I've had to go through a hell of a lot of long suffering because of the cold hearts of the people do not want to give me substance unless I bow down and worship your God. But I don't worship your God. So, it is what it is. Truth is the truth, and you ain't going to change it, <laughs> no matter what you believe, no matter what the hell you believe, no amount of what you believe, what you psych yourself out to believe, people, will you change his eternal law of reaping what you sow. Nor will you stop 
that eternal time clock from restoring his people who are fulfilling prophecy. See, we're the ones that's fulfilling the prophecies. We're fulfilling the prophecies. But you want to continue to ignore us. Wow. And profess that you love and serve our Father. That's funny. You making yourself a whole ass to my Father. My Father sitting here looking dead at your heart. How is Stony? He couldn't get a word into you if he tried. And he is trying. And it's just bouncing right off because your ego is playing like ping pong. Rejecting every single word of truth that goes forward. You hold your hands up like no truth, no truth. But yeah, you think you know the truth. You are deeply deceived, people. And it's your ego that's going to damn you to destruction. And that's your problem. Not mine. Though I have to suffer, long suffer. I trust in the Most High. Okay? I sacrifice myself. I sacrifice my wants and my needs. Yes, I do. Because I ain't trusting in the God of money. It's engraved on that money in God we trust. Therefore, I ain't earning it. Alright? Even the pay-per-view survey, I barely do that anymore. Alright? I barely do that anymore. We can log on there and see when the last time I logged in there. Alright? But I hardly ever log in there now. Alright? Because, bruh, they, I see what they're doing. Their tactics. If you don't get it fast enough when they send it, then when you do go there, they, they're like, psych, you're too late. You missed out. Like, you're supposed to put money first. Like, they're trying to teach me a lesson. Like, their little 10 cent is supposed to take priority over what I'm doing. <laughs> and so I quit. Um, I kind of like, hold on a second. <clears throat> I'm gonna uh, try to go find. I gotta go to my email because it it uh, hopefully automatically sign me in. And let me check my bro. This news and interest again running in the background. I'm so tired of that. Like oh my god. I be knowing that it's running in the background because my computer be screaming out of nowhere. All of a sudden, my computer starts screaming. <clears throat> Come on, bro. Uh, right, here's one. I'm going to switch you guys over here in a minute. I, I, I haven't logged in here in a while. Happy to see you again. <laughs> All right. So thus far, it's been a while since I logged in here, but it said happy to see you again. That's the first time I've seen that because it's been a while since I logged in here. Uh, it says I have one survey available. All right. Um, so you see I have $3.26. Year to date, twenty one eleven. All right, lifetime. I started this back in twenty twenty one or so, I think. All right, so it, it don't give a lot of, of money. All right, at all. So, um, like I said, it's been a while, and I'm telling you the reason why. Um, but yeah, I ain't trying to do no survey right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, money ain't my god, people. Money is not my God. So, let's go ahead and finish this up. There's not, there's not that much left. Like, please. No, it don't. I merely did it on my spare time. 
But you want to keep playing that freaking cat and mouse game with me? I logged in. I remember the life, bruh. It was something like the last four times I did log in there, they, they were playing that, that hide and seek crap. Like, too late, sorry. It's gone now. Early birds got it. Like, bruh. So, anyway, I don't care about money, people. I don't care about money. You know, I don't care about my life enough to care about money in order to sustain my life. All right? I care more about the most high than my own life. I care more about what he's given unto me. I care I care more about what's within my spirit to do. Okay? I care more about what's within me to do upon this earth. Okay? Than I do about freaking sustaining my life on this earth. Alright? For some reason that seems to piss people off. And that's merely because they're mad at themselves. That they ain't got the willpower. They're mad at themselves that they love money. Like, uh, what the hell? You can stop loving money. All you gotta do is freaking unlearn the wisdom of this world. You know, the Most High realizes that wicked people force this upon all humanity and all creation. You know? But that don't mean that the eternal law of love went out the window. However, he allowed, you know, Lucifer's plan to run rampant to where it seems like the eternal law went out the window. It seems like the wicked are able to just do whatever the hell they want to do to the righteous. It seems like the wicked is the most powerful. It seems like evil is the most powerful. Because why do they have that saying, nice guys always finish last? Because we were living in a time of Satan's reign. Okay? And that's why the nice guys finished last in this time that we were living. But we're in a paradigm shift. Because we've been living in a paradigm. So when you're living in a paradigm, that's not a real reality. Okay? So that because it's not a real reality, of course the nice guys finish last. And it seems as, as if the wicked are winning. That's only for a short period of time in a paradigm. But if evil was all powerful, they would have eternity. But they don't have eternity. Watch and see. Because my God is going to put the God of money to shame. The God of money ain't got nothing on my power. The, what the hell does the God of money have on the eternal living power? How did we get by before they established the economy? Before mortal men established the economy? How did we live our life before these worst of the heathen established their economy on our ancestral land? Why don't you answer that? Therefore, the economy is not eternal. Therefore, it ain't all powerful. Therefore, money is not all powerful. But you about to be shown better than I can tell you. We're only here to give you a divine opportunity to humble yourself and change your heart. I'm sorry that you don't like the way I come across. I'm sorry you don't like my tone, but this is authentically me. And, you know, you should be happy about that. Seeing as how we live in a world full of superficial people that are deceivers. At least I speak the truth to you, and I'm genuine. Okay? So, just because, you know, I ain't all sweet and all of that don't mean you should listen to me. 
Because it ain't me that you're listening to anyway. But the spirit of truth. The Father who sent me. And I'm obedient. So, that's what it is, people. Okay? I don't never plan these things. I just flow by way of the Spirit. Um, that being said, I ain't got nothing else to say. Show. Sure. Alright, we finally got through that whole audio, bro. That thing was almost 54 minutes long. So, um, we finally made it through. It took a long dang time. I think this is what, video number 10? So it took 10 videos to get this thing completed. But all praises to the Most High. Um, it is completed. Alright. Uh, I did go ahead and close out of that um, audio thing. Cut down on a lag. Alright. <clears throat> now. Revelation, a warning to humanity. The Most High's judgment on the world is not really his judgment. It's just a time intervals that were set in motion, okay? Because we living in a paradigm, people, all right? We are in a paradigm. The system is not working, all right? That is how a paradigm shift begins. The established way of seeing the world no longer functions, all right? The established way of seeing this world that you need money in order to live your life upon earth and you must earn it and all it is, that's an established world view, all right? That world view is going to have to change, all right? You're going to have to start operating in real love, real compassion, real kindness, real love, real empathy, okay? You can't for somebody that don't have a heart after money to spend their time, energy, and effort earning it, bro. That is cruel, okay? That is cruel, all right? It's evil. I have a, I have a purpose, all right? And, and, you know, it's evil that you people want to try to strong arm me away from my spiritual mission into freaking earning money. Spending my time, energy, and effort earning money, okay? That's evil, all right? That's evil, and it's cruel, all right? That is not right, people. It's not right. It's not righteous. I ain't no way you can justify it, all right? Now, I was instructed to give you this word, all right? We live in an upside-down world. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, and who put darkness for light, and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter, okay? That's what has happened. And so there are many woes coming upon the wicked, all right? We all have a spiritual purpose, people. All right, it's not exclusive to me, all right? We all have a spiritual purpose, a mission that we have been pursuing without being fully aware of it. And once we bring it completely into consciousness, our lives can really take off, okay? Those who constructed this reality, um, they have literally kept people in a comatose, like comatose, all right? You, you're not able to think clearly, all right? Um, <clears throat> so many people don't know who they are outside of earning money for a living, and that's a shame. Okay, but you can't force that on me. All right. On that note, shalom.